Hi everyone, it's Andrea here from Admire PR and today I've got my good friend Roz Conkey here to talk marketing with us. Welcome Roz. Hi Andrea, Welcome. lovely to see you as always. It's always, always great to chat with you. Now, I've asked you to come up with, sorry, I just, yeah, we're kind of prepared for once, but um, asked you to come up with three top tips, Roz's <laughs> top marketing tip for this year. So yeah, go on, tell us, oh. tell us what they might be. <laughs> when you said three, I was thinking, oh gosh, okay. So I've got to come up with, I've got to narrow it all down to three. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they're kind of, they're quite big things, but um, I really, I was trying to think of, like if I was only going to do, if I was only going to give three pieces of advice people for right now, like where we are right now at the beginning of 2022, yeah. so what would I say? So like the first thing, which is, which is kind of what I say all the time, but it's particularly important right now, which is have your strategy and your plan in place. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, oh, I don't have time to create a plan. I don't have time to create a strategy. I'd, I'd, I'd rather just do some marketing rather than spend time planning. And, and it's easy to make that mistake and think like fall into that trap because, you know, if you've only got a few hours to spend on marketing, then surely it'd be better to you know, write some blog posts or update your website or do all these things, you know. And but if, if you're not careful, like when you start down that road before very long, you immediately get overwhelmed with, oh, OK, well, I could do I could do all of these things. Where do I start? And that slows you down. So I always talk about I talk about planning as like it's like batch cooking. Do you, do you batch cook? I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And do you, I bet, do you meal plan? I bet you're really organized for meal planning, aren't you? I do. Yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> because. Because it's like it's just like batch cooking and meal planning. So over the weekend, I spent about an hour and a half batch cooking a whole load of meals, putting them in the freezer, getting them all ready, so that now I know that not every night, but some nights I'm going to come home, I'm going to have a tiring day for whatever reason, and I'm not going to feel like cooking. And so having my my all of my meals all batch cooked and planned, all I have to do is like grab it out the fridge or the freezer throw it in the oven or like just reheat it, add some pasta, you know, it's, it's done. And marketing planning is like that. You can either spend loads of time, like every time you think, okay, well, I've got a few hours now, I'm going to do some marketing. You, you, you start from scratch and you've got to plan, do your whole meal from scratch and think, okay, well, hang on a minute. What if I, what, what did I eat yesterday? And am I, am I getting a balanced diet? And am I, you know, all of these thoughts that if you if you do all of your meals every day that's what you've got going on every day and it's just this extra mental load whereas if you batch cook you, you don't have that you know you just you look at your plan you go okay that's what I'm eating tonight fine done and you don't end up accidentally eating pasta three nights in a row which is what I do if I don't meal plan like oh gosh we had that yesterday and I'm already halfway through cooking it oh never mind <laughs> and and that's that same house with marketing you know you end up doing lots of what your kind of what your gut tells you you should be doing which is actually not necessarily what is logically best for your business so that's my first um right. tip is about like make like get your plan in place even if it just spend a couple of hours putting together a marketing plan so that you've got you know a good a balanced diet of marketing activities across the quarter so I do 90 day plans as I know you do Andrea mm -hmm. and because then you've got you've, you've got a real balance of marketing activities and you don't have to think every day, oh gosh, what am I going to do on my marketing today? It's, you've already batch cooked those decisions. Love it. Great analogy. Love that. So that's my first tip. Get your plan in place. My second tip is about keeping control of your own strategy. So um, I know that you'll agree on this, Andrew, that like, as, a, as an external person to a business, you know, working with clients like you do, there's, you can't, you can, I know as I, when I work as a consultant, I can never understand my client's um ideal customers as well as they can because they speak to them every day you know they know their ideal customer they really understand their audience and I can ask loads of questions and I can get a really good idea of who their audience is but I can never understand them quite as well as my client does and what breaks my heart is when I see businesses small businesses often like kind of handing over control of their strategy to external marketing suppliers and saying look can you just decide what I should do you decide like what what should what we should what our strategy should be because it's it's a bit like saying to your accountant okay you make all of your my financial decisions because I don't really know enough about accountancy to do that yeah. and like whenever I say that to an accountant they're always like 
<laughs> because, because it puts you as a, as a business owner, it puts the business owner in a really vulnerable position. Mm. So my second tip is to always keep control of your strategy. Make sure that you're the one dictating who your eyes, your customers, who your audience is. Making, like, it's not about doing all the work yourself, but it's about the control. Mm. So always controlling the strategy yourself um, rather than handing over that control to someone outside your business. Um, and my third tip, oh yeah, was is particularly pertinent right now because of like there's so many things changing and stuff. And particularly, you know, if you've written a plan, and you think, oh yeah, the stuff might change in a few weeks. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, if you've if you've got control of your strategy and you've got your plan, and my third tip is to keep listening to your customers. So keep mm. here, you know, getting feedback from them, keep speaking to them, making sure that like if their context changes then you can adapt your plan, you can shift your strategy, and then you can tell your suppliers, you know, accordingly if things change. Um, so be, be nimble, because if you're, if you're constantly listening to your customers, then you can be nimble and adjust mm. much more quickly, which is really important, is going to be important this year, I think. I mean, it has been so important over the last two years, and I think it'll continue to be important for the next, well, who knows. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say year, and then I thought, oh, is that optimistic? <laughs> but yeah keep keep listening to your customers and um and adapt if you need to yeah so those are my three tips love it plan get your plan in place batch cook all of your ideas and your marketing decisions and then roll it out um i forgot what the second was oh yeah keep control of your strategy so that you're the one like owning it and then keep listening to your customers Thank and have a great year oh excellent tips Ros, thank you so much. I will put Ros's details with when we post this out so everyone can see who you are and go onto your website and connect with you. Um, thank, you. thank you. That was gold. You're welcome. Thank you.